Hey everybody, Sean Sweeney here from s &J Lessons. First of all, thank you very much and uh, thank you for joining us. For those of you who are coming on early, we do appreciate it. Um, I have a very special guest uh, this evening. I have a gentleman, Coach Chris Lewitt from New York. Uh, Chris trains um, all kinds, uh, juniors mainly, down in New York, performance. He's a, they call him the, uh, the prodigy, the, the, the prodigy coach from New York. I'm um, looking very much forward to having Chris join us. We're going to talk tennis, obviously. We're going to talk high performance. We're going to have a great time. Um, I'll start off by always getting to know Chris. We'll ask him some great questions about who he is, his thoughts, his beliefs, his policies. And then we'll dive into high performance tennis and, and talk tennis, uh, which is going to be great. Uh, I want to hear his background, understand where he's coming from. He's doing some fantastic stuff uh, up in the, in the States, or down in the States, I should say, since I'm up in Canada. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, learning more about Chris and what he's doing and, and how he's getting the, uh, the kids to, to maximize their uh, opportunity. And I'm just going to get our guests allowed in here so I can make sure I see him when he comes in so I can invite him in. I want to take the opportunity to thank um, Sway Medical. Uh, Sway Medical uh, helps us out with our team. They have, so it's a, it's a sponsor. Um, it's an unbelievable application that's on the iPhone or the iPad or an Android. And it's generally used as part of a concussion management protocol. It's a balance and reaction test, but man, oh man, uh, we use it for performance. So we can literally uh, do a baseline test of the athletes. They, uh, we know what their baseline for reaction and for balance is. And then from there, we can test them every day and get an understanding of how that athlete's feeling. So maybe there's a sleep issue or a slight injury or a nutrition issue, uh, even testing before and after practice. You can very quickly see what the issues are. Um, I'll leave the um, in the comments box, I'll leave uh, how you can get access to Sway. And you can get it for yourself and your teams um, and track your athletes and just part, make it part of the data set. Uh, for coaches, it's a great opportunity to drive uh, additional revenue um, for, for your team for monitoring and administering the, the, the tests and making sure that you're capturing all that data. Simply a fantastic tool for you to use, uh, again, on the performance side. So even though it's generally seen in uh, on the sideline for hockey or tennis, uh, excuse me, football or soccer, um, we, we tennis folks can use it as well uh, from performance. And, and everybody else I just mentioned, you can also use it for performance. We actually uh, took it to a rink today and sold it there. So um, unbelievable tool. Thank you very much, Sway Medical, for uh, supporting us. And uh, we love being uh, utilizing your product and sharing your product with others. So if, again, coaches, you can get that down below. Check it out, get the information, and uh, if you have any questions on it, give me a call. Uh, that would be awesome. We're also uh, looking forward to bringing in a new sp sponsor. And again, um, this is on the concussion side. Uh, they're, they're Cap Corp, and Cap Corp is out of uh, Alberta, and uh, they provide an amazing um, test uh, for athletes to see if they are susceptible to concussion, first of all. And if they are, they'll, they'll provide them with a easy-to-use 16-week um, program to start strengthening the neck. Um, it's all done online. It's automated. You take a quick test that they use in their machines. You go to one of the testing centers, and very quickly you can identify what the issues are and how you can start fixing it. 16 weeks of training, twice a week, 10 minutes a shot, and you're starting to gonna move your neck power up to where it needs to be, and specifically for you. So, you know, depending on what's weaker, you'll be able to use it. So thank you, CapCorp, for your support. We really appreciate it. And again, I'll put their link down in the box as well. And finally, our last sponsor, TMX. Unbelievable application. Everybody can use it. Um, you simply have it for your team uh, to be able to track events, uh, communicate, work together. Um, you have inline story, take online registrations if you're running clinics, so on and so forth. And the great part that I love about it is the connect or college connect piece. So you can actually get in and connect with colleges, uh, communicate with coaches. You can see, uh, track what scores for each school for the act, for the SAT, uh, the GPA average in that school. You can have your favorites. You can and then track which ones you can get into right now and then start communicating with the coaches right out of the app. So that's a pretty cool one as well. And I'll put that link in the box uh, as well. So there'll be a fourth link tonight because I'm also going to put Chris's in uh, so you guys can get a hold of him. He'll give us all the information at the end so you know how to get a hold of them and be able to um, communicate with Chris uh, directly, especially if you want to get to one of his camps and visit uh, beautiful Vermont. Because I, I don't know if he switched over to Vermont yet. I know they were working on the uh, the courts. I saw some pictures on Facebook. But I don't know if Chris is actually at Vermont yet, so I'll have to ask him when we get to the, the tennis side. And again, so those are the three sponsors that I wanted to thank. I wanted to thank Sway Medical. 
Capcorp and uh, Team X. I uh, really appreciate the support for the show. I know it's just our second one, but we will get very popular, I hope. That's the goal. Uh, we're going to bring you great people. The, the goal is to bring you great coaches, performance coaches, mental performance coaches, uh, to provide great information and share their thoughts and information with you, uh, get to know some new people, uh, learn about some, potentially some new products, and uh, even uh, better yet for you tennis players, more techniques, more training sessions, what to do, how to do it, what kids are doing out there currently, what you should suspect. You know, one of the things, and I don't know if we'll, we'll talk about it, tonight I, I would like to talk about it with Chris but I get you know every time I have a group session or we're sitting in between practices and we're talking about you know goals as a general uh, uh, rule not individual goals but well I guess it's individual but when you know we're not sitting down we're not running out of plan we're just talking and you don't know I'll say hey what's you know what, what's everybody want to do uh, in their tennis career and, and lo and behold nine out of ten kids will put up their hands saying I'd like to be world number one and the tenth is always some weird answer like I'd be like like to be 15 or 14 something different so you know it's, it's unique to everybody uh, but most of them want to be number one and and the question is then does the effort that you're putting in to becoming world number one that goal that you state equate to what really it means to get there what does it take to get there and the great news is that there's people that have done it over and over again for the last you know forever that the game has been around and what have they done to get there now the game obviously has been modernized over the last i'd say 20 years and, and maybe even 15 where it's really changed where it's become like every other sport where it's uh, i don't want to say full time uh, as a junior but it gets you know you got to make a decision much earlier in life now um, as to when you're going to specialize, although again, I we can have a whole conversation around specialization, because I believe athletes need to be athletes. You need to train all the different movements, um, so there are there is room for soccer and all these other sports. Uh, but again, uh, the game has modernized, so it's important to understand what do you have to do to really become number one. And there's people out there in front of you that you can mimic and learn from and watch. And I, I love to get Chris's thoughts, but you know, uh, we were fortunate enough. My son was growing up at a time and playing here at a time. Uh, when uh, Dennis uh, uh, Shapovalov and uh, not so much Felix, because Felix was younger, but we do have friends that played against him and with him. But we know their training schedules and what they were doing. And now I think, you know, I can't remember what their rankings are, but it's, it's uh, you know, it, I think Dennis is definitely, in the, they're both in the top 30, I believe now. Uh, they played each other this week and Felix won down in Madrid. Um, so pretty awesome. Uh, these are 17-year-old kids uh, out of Canada, the, the tennis mech of the world. And, but you see their schedules. I mean, our, our provincial association had posted their schedules, and we know exactly what they were doing on a daily basis. And it was pretty awesome to see exactly what they were doing and how they were doing it. And, and yet, you know, you ask a child that's in that group again, you want to be world number one? Yes. And it's pretty funny because, you know, uh, Dennis, we had Shapovalov's schedule in the OTA magazine. It was interesting. You know, he was, you know, you know the morning was tennis. Then he had lunch, gym. Tennis, so 4 o'clock came around, 4, 4.30, stretching, get home in the car. I think they, at this point they were training down at Saddlebrook uh, with his mom and, and, and other coaches. I, I don't know if Tessa was at Saddlebrook with him, but he was definitely down there as well. And, and then off he would go to a home, have dinner, do maybe a half hour, 40 minutes of homework, and then in bed. So by, by 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock as a kid, he was in bed, right? And then the whole same routine was over again. So that's one clear example of that. I mean, there's others that do that as well. So if they're making it, to, that's what it takes to get to that level. You have to assume that you're going to have to put in at least that effort uh, to get to that level, especially if, you know, maybe you're not as talented, or you're not as fast, you're not as tall, uh, whatever, the, whatever the situation is. How, how are you going to maximize, you know, you put up your hand to be world number one. Are you putting in that effort? And it was really cool because today I actually, uh, I was meeting with a, um, a, a hockey group and the hockey group, we were having the same conversation around uh, tracking goals. So, you know, he was a goaltender coach. And he was saying me to, to me today, he goes, you know, I would really like to uh, um, see my kids as I, as I take them through their plans. And I'm sitting down with their parents. And, and the child says, you know, whatever the goal is, I want to be an NHL goalie. And, you know, and he's looking and seeing, well, does the effort, because I know what the effort it takes because I train NHL goalies, does the effort that you're putting in equate to what they're doing? You know, so if I ask you to watch film, highly specialized film for goalies are you doing it you know and he goes one kid i there was four views on on the site i wanted to show him and, and i go I, I watched it four times so that means he hadn't watched it yet he wanted to be an nhl goalie so you know what i mean so is the effort equated it is equal to goals and if that's the case and it's not equal you better have a lot of talent to get there so it's very cool so i'm just going to check we're now 902 so I'm, I'm waiting for chris again and again we have had issues getting people in so just give me a second here. I'm just going to move this off and check my computer and see if there's a note or anything from Chris and see if we've had any issues because we'll check right now if we've had any issues. No, no issues there yet. Maybe Chris is just a little bit later. I have the wrong time. 
but we should be good. So let me just check and see if he's in. Not yet. So hopefully we'll see him coming in a second. So let me just put my stand back up here so you can look. And I apologize. Uh, this is as good as it's going to get from my end. Hopefully Chris has some good lighting for his end. But yeah, you know, so uh, the goals have to equate. And the effort has to equate the goals. And are you going to accomplish those goals? And what's, and I said, as I said, the, the information is out there. You just have to say, okay, can I meet these standards? And then surpass them if I have to. And then you can get to wherever you want to go. But there's, there's nobody in this world, we're all human beings, there's nobody in this world that can't achieve what they want to achieve if they put their mind to it and then apply the effort that's required to get there. Right? So if you're a little kid sitting now in, 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 a, in a classroom like we have at the, or had at the academy and a coach asks you what do you want to be and you put up your hand to be number one, then just find out what the effort level takes and go do it. And, and you can be anywhere you want to be as long as you put the effort in uh, to go and do it. Now, could you beat Roger Federer in his prime? Uh, maybe, maybe not. You know what? It's uh, it's all cool. So let me just. Chris says he's online now. So let me see here. Uh, I'm just going to connect with him on fa on 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 Facebook on my computer and connect communicate with him. Love to see him jump in here. Love to have him on the on the call. I'm good at stalling, but it takes a lot to stall. I'm just saying yes. He should join the feed. So hopefully he jumps in here. We're just communicating via Facebook Messenger. All right to get him on here and we're really looking forward to having chris join us coach chris can join us here very shortly hopefully there's no issues with the live feed we had an issue last week uh with ruben ruben was going to join us as many of you saw and unfortunately uh we couldn't get him in for some reason it was uh you know the first night we had him in it was great uh ruben gave a lot of great information just couldn't get him in the second night we had some more to protect more information to give but just couldn't do it so hopefully chris can join us we're looking forward to hearing some great and valuable information from chris and talk some high performance tennis uh, he's doing an amazing job down in the U.S., and we're really looking forward to some of the things that he's doing and, and how he's working with his kids. I think he has something very special going on from everything that I read about him and what he's doing. Uh, it just seems to be very, very awesome. Obviously, he's very dedicated. Uh, the gentleman uh, bought his own camp uh, in Vermont, so he teaches down in... Um, he teaches down in... Um, I'm just trying to get you in, Chris, here, so apologize. Not sure why you're not showing up on my feed. You should be showing up on my feed. Hopefully, you're in. And then we get you. Maybe it's maybe it's just a delay on my live feed here, and we'll just give you a second. Usually, I can just add you in as a guest. But see you there. So let me give me a second. I'm just going to find out why you're not showing up on my feed because you should be. Yeah, there you are. It says you're coming in, so we're just waiting to join us, Chris. You have permission, yeah. and now I can move it over. Hey, buddy. Hey, I Sean. For about twenty-five minutes, it was awesome. <laughs> no way. No, I, I mean, twenty-five no, minutes, maybe ten. Though I always come on a little bit early just to try and talk, and I always I have three or four sponsors usually that I that uh. I like to thank. So. Uh, and, but, oh, but very cool. Like Ruben, I don't know if you know Ruben. Ruben Stratum from New Zealand. He was supposed to be in on Tuesday, and he couldn't get in like you just did. You know what I mean? So he was like literally messaging me, messaging, messaging. I'm like, dude, you got to just ask to connect, and I'll let you in. <laughs> oh well, this is a, a relatively newer technology from Facebook, and it's really no, great. It's awesome. It's really hey, cool. man, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate yeah. it. I know I was just asking I mean, I, I, what I'd like to do in the show, Chris, is basically go through maybe four or five questions that I steal from uh, uh, one, one of my favorite authors. And I, I get, it allows the audience to get to know you a little bit better and uh, for me to get to know you a little bit better. And then I want to talk a little bit of high performance tennis because I know you're doing some great things down in the U.S. And I shared a little bit while you were, while you, we were coming on. But I, like, there's little things, like, I didn't know if you're already in Vermont oh, cool. or you're still in New York. So I'd like to cover that as well as we get going, okay? That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely. It, it was funny because one, one of my friends is uh, commenting. He says, tell, tell Sean what you were doing just yeah. before you got on. <laughs> That's why I'm smiling. Because if you know, I have a full house here with, I have three kids and four pets, <laughs> dog, cat, and two hamsters. That's awesome. And it was, it's a, it's a madhouse. It was what, a zoo Chris, here. I, I always make this like, I mean, this is only my second show, but I, I make it kid friendly because I don't really think like, it's good. I mean, this is all about just us talking kids in the background have fun you know what i mean if they show up and put their face in the camera have a good time okay there's a yeah. 50 50 chance that my That's kids fine. barge there's in 
Listen, just want everyone to know. If my kid walks down here and wants to swing a racket, there's a 50 50 chance that my dog will start barking. <laughs> so you know? So, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So thanks for joining, my friend. Really, really appreciate it. Um, let me ask you a couple questions, if you don't mind. Just so, because let, let, I'm going to share this. We're going to post this out and boost it out and try and get a large audience as we get going. So it'd be really great for people to get to know you. Yep. And one of the questions I love it. asking, Chris, is, is, this, is, is if you could have a, a billboard anywhere in the world, right? And what would the message that you want to have on that billboard? And it could be a quote from others. It could be As a coach? I mean, just what, what are your As a coach Whatever or for like. life? You can reach seven, 7 billion people well, if you want. I mean, it's your billboard. Well, as, as a coach, you know, I believe in the Spanish way. So I would say you got to learn to suffer. <laughs> that's, that's probably one of my, my buzzwords, you know, that we talk about a lot with the kids building character. So that, that comes straight from Spain, you know. That, for a simple billboard, I'd probably go with something like that. Or, you know, I have many others, but... You know, you have to you have yeah. to learn to suffer to be. That's to awesome. Be I, would think, I think maybe add the be great part to be great. Absolutely. To be a champion. That's awesome. There's many more. Maybe if I could line up the well, billboards, give me, you know, give me every three. hundred meters. Give me two more. <laughs> well, for tennis, sure. uh, we're talking about tennis now instead of life. But sometimes tennis reflects the life. You know, tennis is a microcosm of life, but. You know, tennis is a game of running, uh, and it, that sounds very simple, but we have many kids in the U.S. that they actually don't <laughs> want to run that much. And so one of the truths for me is that, that in tennis, yeah. you need to run. You need to be willing to run. And you need to, yeah. so you need to have discipline, you know. So these are, you know, some of the things from Spain that I tried to impress on my players. And we also tried to be... Yeah patient yeah. and consistent you know the, some of the the virtues from spain but those are some some small things that yeah. i believe in i'm sure i, I think we're on some same, more. you and i are on the same page when it comes to patience i mean they're running too they're running too they, they, you mm -hmm. know um the running uh the, the running one of the first things that some of the coaches do in spain when i bring teams there is they just they sometimes it just starts feeding some balls left and right, and they sort of yell at the kids, you know, yeah. come on, run, you know, go, yeah. don't don't stop, don't quit, be willing to suffer, be willing to sacrifice, whatever it takes, chase chase that chase every ball, you know, just as a basic yeah. philosophy, chase, That's unbelievable. And even if you're an offensive player, and look, I have I have no problem with that. I love weapons, but just to have that in the back of your mind, that you, you know how to do that, that you, you're willing to do that, to suffer and chase and to have that discipline. I think that's, I really want all my players yeah, to learn that when they're absolutely. young. Absolutely, same here. Uh, and like I said, they, they may grow up to be very offensive players, but I want to I wanna build that. Would you not say that team. Nadal is still an offensive player? Yeah, I think he's kind of a combo deal. You know, he's he's a new yeah. generation of a Spanish player, a, a guy who's very consistent and can run. I mean, he exemplifies some. He exemplifies very well the qualities yeah. that I'm describing, but with yeah. huge weapon. He would be he would be a, a better modern Spanish player if he had a bigger yes. serve. Yes, and it's 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 cost him probably a few uh, few championships. Yes, and probably put more wear and tear on his body if he had spent more time developing a serve. And if you understand the, the system of Tony Nadal, I've been studying Tony's methodology this year. I'm taking some of his online yeah. classes, and they're really enlightening for me. It's been a wonderful experience. And I've also been to his academy in Mallorca. And Tony, for better or for worse, doesn't believe in doing that much serving uh, partly because he's afraid of injuring the players, but w which is good. I mean, it's a good. Yeah. It's good to be careful with the young kid's shoulder. But at the same time, if you don't get those reps, you may not develop a big weapon. And in Spain, historically, they've had a lot of champion players that Correct. didn't serve that yeah. well. And we could talk about why that is, but basically, in a two-hour practice in Spain. 
they might do about 10 minutes of serving at the end and a heck of a lot of ground strokes for an hour yeah. and 15 so let, minutes. I don't know if I will. Let, let, me, let me ask you, you your, for you, what is uh, your philosophy? So you're in the Spanish way. My kids serve quite a bit. Uh, I do have 10 and a half big servers. Uh, I do believe in patience. I, I, yeah. You know, uh, we quite often have a good discussion around, yeah. you know, the four ball philosophy. Uh, I'm a balanced. I'm balanced. Yeah, like I, I want, don't... I want you, like you, to have everything, right? Uh, but lots yeah, of, like we serve a lot. And I, I've been now, not my little little kids, but when you start getting ten, eleven, you twelve, we're starting to serve. You, you're you're expected to hit certain standards. What about you? Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I, I just, I just want to make sure the kids are safe. You know, the, the yeah. player welfare is the most Im the most important thing for me having healthy players who are not injured because you can't be a champion. You can't hold up the trophy right. if you're hurt. And if you're on tour, you oh, can't make a living. That's right. If you're hurt. So for me, the, the serving is so important. You see the top players now and they have the, those incredible weapons. And I, I believe yeah. in the same as you that I spend a lot of time on the serve. And that's where I, I move away from the classic Spanish model. They're changing now in Spain. They're, they, they're evolving like every yes. other country has to. And they're evolving and they're teaching more sir. But historically, there are still many pockets in Spain where, unfortunately for them, there are many traditional Spanish coaches who see the serve as a way to begin the point and yeah. not as a way to end point. Or at least put you in the offensive position. And that, that, that will yeah. change. It's changing. But it's still a, a symptom there, an issue. You need both. You can think back to many yeah. Spanish champions who didn't have that yeah. big serve, you know. For me, if you can get the Nadal style with an incredible serve, you have, you you have everything, yeah. man. You know? I, I love the fact, and I love your thoughts, but I love the fact that, you know, Nadal can lose the first set, but he knows just from a conditioning standpoint, when he sits down at that, that you know, whether it's five five sets or whatever, he knows he's got it in the tank. That's what I love about this and, and his and his yes. conditioning. Yeah, physically and mentally. So he calls it in the Nadal system. They call it endurance, and that's the word they use in, in sometimes in Spain, along with suffering yeah. to endure. And it means the physical, like you're describing, <laughs> and also the mental. Both both qualities. What's you what's know? your philosophy around? Um, the conditioning part is it more um I, I use a trainer a performance trainer but is it more and maybe you do too probably you too but is it more endurance like long distance running or is it a ton of sprint work that we do a ton of sprint work what's what's your philosophy yeah i i, I know that modern sports science is moving to to more quick quicker work work that reflects the ratio of yeah. time on the tennis court so I, I, I'm with that. I, I still have uh, some players who I, I don't mind doing some some cardio work with them, yeah. maybe preseason, you know, if they're, or off season, you know. But yeah, I think most most sports scientists now and top trainers are moving towards uh, more interval models, shorter ratio, ratios that reflect yeah. what players are doing uh, uh, with their time constraints on the court. So. Yeah, traditionally in Spain, they have done a lot of uh, longer distance running, and, and that is also evolving in Spain. The, the system, it's, very, it's an interesting conversation in and of itself. It's just what did they used to do in Spain, and what are they changing over the decades? Yeah, yeah. You know, not, yeah. not to sidetrack no, uh, no, your awesome. interview, but, but I know it's uh, one of my favorite subjects. And, 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 there is, and I believe in the next-gen Spanish model, you know, that, that they're, they're evolving and, and they're adapting because – why are they ha why are they adapting? Because everyone else yeah. is taken from them, you know. A every other country has learned from Spain and their incredible success in the last Correct. thirty or forty years. They've taken their drills, they've taken their philosophy, and they they're using it. So Spain is if they don't adapt, they're going to be in trouble. And, and if you look at their numbers on the pro tour, they are dwindling to it. Yeah, well, uh, they're well, going Canada down. Is bursting through know? the roof right now. You know what I mean? But but. But, and it's great. It's fantastic I, for I you guys. It's awesome. One of the stories, and I, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but it was with uh, Milos Ronach. He was down in Spain training. Um, you know, it was back before he made his run yes. to the top. He was on his way to the top ten, and 
he was working with the boys. Yes. It was, uh, and, and he was sitting there. And I guess it must have been right around Davis Cup time because they were at the kitchen table and a mall girl got the call and said he wasn't on the team. Right. And, and, he, and, and, and Mila said, well, you must mm -hmm. be pissed. You're not on the team. He goes, no, no, I'll just work harder. Right. And, and, and it struck a chord with him. And, and you know, he couldn't believe this, this the dedication to how the, the Spanish players were doing the dishes, making their beds, doing everything they needed to do, all mm -hmm. the details. And he's in Canada. It really struck a chord. So I got to work harder. You know what I mean? And then he made the first to top 10. Yeah. You know, so it's pretty, you know what I mean? Yeah. Awesome. Then, then is, does Raonich still have a Spanish coaching team now? Because he did for many years. He's not, I think he's with Lubitsch now, isn't he? I might think so. Okay. So he was with Four yes. Slam, right? Did he work sure with Four Slam? Yeah. They're, they're based in, yes. in Barcelona. And, and That's now, he, he was with them. Four Slam he with developed. Them. Yeah. He was, right, for a while? Yeah, he was. Or no? no, no. Maybe I'm mistaken. But, but uh, there's a number of players that now. The thing is, in this, this, the native Spanish players are going down a little, but people forget how many player, foreigners they, they train with Spain or they have a Spanish team. But that, that's so, the same like America. People, you know, Spain is like still America, there. There's so many people to train down there. I mean, they're just not from the U.S. You know what I mean? You, you know? That, yeah, it's changed a lot. So they're, they're not, they don't have as much luck with the native-born players now. Their numbers are going down, but the Spanish trained players from other countries are, are yeah. big and growing. You, you just, just at four slam alone, like for example, they developed Kachinov and Rublev. And, and I believe Raonic was there before though, or maybe he was with an individual Spanish coach, but, but people need to look up past the, the country flag on the rankings and look to right. who the coaching team is. And also where those players spent their formative years. For me, the, the Mecca for tennis is, is still, probably Barcelona area and, and certain parts of Florida yeah. in the world. You know, those, those, those two areas are, are incredible tennis, tennis. development yeah. space. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let me get back to a question with you, my friend. That's okay. More personal. Question. Yeah. What's the, what would you say is the, the, the best or most worthwhile investment that you've ever made, whether it's tennis or personal, preferably tennis, but what's the, you know, up to you. This is a good question, and I liked your billboard <laughs> question too. Uh, yes, well, I get I have a lot of coaches yeah. who I mentor, and I try I usually relay to them that the best best investment, best thing I ever did for tennis, for my tennis, I'll name a couple, but one was was paying to go to Spain okay. for the first time. And in my experience, many coaches they don't want to spend on their yeah. education. They don't want to spend too much. And they start calculating the cost benefit, you know, to do this or that or to go to this conference or that conference and to study here or there. And I, I, I took a big risk. You know, I, 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 don't, never, yeah. I don't come from money. And I had, I, everything I, I built, yeah. is, I'm self-made. You know, I, I, I saved up yeah. my money coaching yeah. the hard way, you know, hours, yeah. thousands of hours. To, you know, I bought my club, my first, my, my, my dream to have my yeah. own little tennis club now in Vermont. And I yeah. saved up 10 years to buy that. You know, that was uh, just pure hard work and dedication. No one, no one cut Are you me a there check for that. And yeah, That's no, I'm yeah, in New York City. Thank you. Keep going. So we're just there in the summer and I run some coaches workshops there and we do our filming, you know, we're building out an online presence and we try to use the club for filming. So, yeah, that's, that's what we do there. But my point is that I had a choice many years ago, going, maybe now 13 years ago. I, I believe it was 2006 when I first went to Spain. And I paid for a, a coaching course yep. at Sanchez Casal, nope. which was not cheap. I believe it was over a thousand dollars, and I I didn't care. I said, you know what, I'm doing this, and I paid for the ticket, which was also probably a thousand. This is a That's lot right. of money yeah. for me back then, you know. And I didn't work. I went for yeah. a few weeks, two or three weeks, and I didn't work those weeks either. But I had a curiosity, and I had I, I had a passion to learn, and I wanted to know firsthand what they were doing there. I didn't right. want to hear it from others. I didn't want to hear it in a 45-minute 
conference presentation. I wanted First to hand. know Live for it. myself. Yeah. yeah, and and the other thing that I so I, I say to coaches, spend on yeah. your invest in yourself. You know, don't don't be cheap. Because at the end of the day, you need to have knowledge, and you need to have knowledge that other coaches don't have. If you want to, exactly, you be need the to best. skill up. And yeah, and if you and here's another thing I tell a lot of young coaches who mentor with me. I say, don't just go to conferences because that knowledge anyone can get it there. And when it, the conferences conferences are good, but for me they're like a place where you get to test taste. Taste or you need to you can test too. You can try out different I ideas and learn uh, get a taste of different philosophies. But the real way to learn is by finding great coaches and yeah. going to them and spending significant amounts of time with them yeah. as a mentee. You need exactly. to find mentors. So that's the other thing I, I say. Don't just learn. Uh, books are important. Conferences are good. No. But they're not enough. You need to go find someone great and and absorb them in, for a significant amount of time. Absorb their, yeah, their and you have to live it, right? Knowledge. I mean, I, I did the same thing. So my my mentors in the U.S. and I I must I I, I drove to Atlanta from Ottawa, like I, there must have exactly. been a hundred thousand dollar investment, easy. Yeah, how how many guys were willing to do that? And I bet Tons. you got I'm a still lot. Still got a lot out of it. My my relationship is huge with the gentleman that that Heath Waters that I that I mentor under, and then, and you know I, we're going to come visit exactly. you this summer. I'm going to learn. You know what I mean? And with the yeah. come down, it's going to be awesome. Exactly. And he he does a good job. I like the way he teaches the technique. You know, he's teaching modern techniques. Yeah. Thank God. Well, you know, this we have so many coaches in the Stone Age, <laughs> and they just they just they're yeah. just inframed in the classical mindset. And I, I like yeah, what no, I've I, seen. So I spent you. the last eight years living with him, basically, you know, as much as I could. Same, way, but the same principle. Now, my my next step is like you get get to Spain, you know, for my coaching. So, you know what I mean? So, right. Right. Well, I, I can help you. I can help you navigate that because I, I'll I'll make sure you Perfect. get the right awesome. Thank you, my there. friend. And, and so, your your biggest investment was getting to Spain for the first time. You said there was a couple. Is there anything else in there? Yes. Well, what I meant was, is, is spe tra yeah. going international. I, I, there's another thing that I say, try to learn from other countries yeah. and other systems, spend on your spend, what needs to be, invest in yourself and find personal mentors, find, in, find people who yeah. will take you under their wing and let you shadow them and let, let you spend time and find people who want to teach you, you know, some, there are some great coaches who don't want to share. They're not really good teachers, yeah. and they don't really want to share. So you have to find someone who, who has the knowledge, but who is also – who has uh, teaching and mentoring in their DNA. That's and true. not everyone is like that. You know, I, I would say that I'm wired that way. I love to take coaches under my wing. I have many young coaches who I've trained, and it's, it's uh, yeah. rewarding for me. But, but not no, all coaches true. are like yeah. that. No, it, it but there, there's great ones out uh, there that you can mentor under. So if anybody's looking to coach, there are great people that can help you. I mean, contact us, put your comments in. We'll make sure. you, you ha you, yeah, you, you have to be, and sometimes yeah. you have to be persistent. You have to have, and you have to find a way to get, to connect with those great minds. It's not easy sometimes. Uh, the, the other thing that I would say, uh, we were talking about, Things that I believe in. Oh, I had this great one, and it just just uh, slipped my mind. You want to invest in yourself. You want. Oh, I had one more really good one. Okay. Okay. It, yeah, it came back to me. So the the other one is okay. sports science. And and to try to educate yourself in biomechanics and all the all the other facets of sports science, whether it's nutrition or physiology or anatomy yeah everything because and also to keep up to date with the latest research in tennis and to try to teach in an evidence based way not not to teach solely based on opinion there's so much opinion and you, you need to try to anchor your coaching yeah. in evidence and and that means you have to read you have to do some research. You have to be willing to to, mm -hmm. to study. 
And so I, I think the combination of seeking mentors and getting that, that, that personal learning, the on-court yep. experiential learning and the, the academic side of it, if you can have yep. both of those things, and it's study, magic. study video, study, study, study. Right. Yes. Try to try not to teach just the way you learned or the way, the the way someone told you it should be. You try whenever possible. Uh, there are some. There we don't have enough studies in tennis. We don't have enough research in tennis. So there has to be some some things you do that are not going to have evidence. But as much as possible, try to align yourself with the smart people, the PhDs, the doctorates who are doing research, try to be within the parameters that they said, if, if possible. Sometimes you need to be outside the box. You need to, uh, need to coach in a way that maybe doesn't have the support yet, evidentially, scientifically, but try. Try to stay within the parameters yeah. of modern science. It's better, safer for your kids and, and more responsible, Absolutely. more professional. Absolutely. You know, that, that's very, I think that's very important. For example, I know some coaches who are, are willing to do the on-court mentoring, but they don't want to open a book. Yeah. And they, they don't want to read a research study or try to decipher uh, re research, you know, understand yeah. anything. You know? uh, and then I, there are some coaches who are very bookish and they are very scientifically minded. They may yeah, have advanced absolutely. degrees. But they don't actually know how to coach that great. Well, you know, they don't actually, they're not in the, the trenches that much. the kids understand what they're saying. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know? So that's what I, that's my point. You know, it takes both. And even if I could add sure. to that one more is, is if sure. possible, for some coaches it's not possible. But if possible, try to play very well. Try to learn how to yeah. play the game very well. I still and work obviously if, if you come... Yeah, so for, I, I say it just as an aside. It's not the most important, but if you can play the game at a high level, it, it is helpful because you can provide a, an amazing controlled workout for your players. You can you can be with them on the road and give them good practice. It's very, it's very convenient. And yeah, I, I, I always have to bring a partner, the higher level that, partner, a younger kid. Yeah, I know it, it's okay. It's okay. It's not essential, but. Oh, if you great. can, it's worth pursuing, especially if you're coming up from from for younger younger coaches, and if they can, the higher level that you compete at, Absolutely. it gives you a good knowledge. It does, you know, it gives you you understand what players are going through, and and it gives you that perspective. And it's not essential, but it, it, like I said, if you you let's say you're not injured, and if you you are able to develop a yeah. good game when you are young. It's it's great oh, to absolutely. keep a strong game if you can. My friend. Hey, you, you talked about books a second ago. Yeah. What's your favorite book to, to to give out to parents or to read yourself? Yeah, now I find I'm doing a lot of online learning, but for books on well, what <laughs> books have I liked that have influenced me a lot? I, I would say. I, I, I try to follow uh, Mark okay. Kovacs' work. I, I, I read a lot of Mark Kovacs and, and his okay. research studies. The, I don't find too much benefit from commercial books. I'm trying to think of one that's had a really big impact. I'm going to check my, my – I could go check my, right. my shelf. I, I, I try to stay yeah. within research, you know, research and – the last few years, I spend a long, a lot of time online, like taking courses and videos, yeah. like you said. And have, and have you read the Talent Code? Yeah, yeah I blinked it. Yeah. You know, blink. Yeah, yeah. I, I skimmed it. I, I, I'm familiar with with uh, Daniel Coyle's work, though. The the, the basic I give, philosophy. I give that to all my parents. Uh, so that's how I'm going to teach. Them. Yeah, it's it's I a good one. Them. I suggest it's definitely buy good. It. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So. It, Yes, I, I don't know if I hundred percent agree that it's only hard work, but no, no, but like the the building but, of the myelin uh, and, and and being able to do all that shadow work and all that stuff. I think that's ah, tremendously important. So, so when I'm coaching I, the kids I, doing a thousand I, I shadows, like that. they know why. Yeah. I agree. I agree that that research, the way he presented the research on myelination and building motoric skills, I I yeah. see that because I do yeah. a lot of technical work, 
And that's what it, it is an amazing process to behold. When you see a player begin to myelinate well and it becomes like a machine, it becomes, it becomes fluid. And that's what he's describing. I, I always I always question it, is, is that the only neurobiological process at work there? Because I don't believe the, the neuroscience complete. is, com is yeah. fully complete yeah. yet. It's probably still evolving, but certainly that's, that is part of the process yeah. of motor learning. And it's and and I, I agree with you. It, it's an, not after reading that about that. I, I I said, wow, this is what I'm doing. You're doing, I'm it, you're doing it already. It's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, we're tr I'm trying to make this myelin thicker and to, to get this super highway going with the neuro uh, the uh, the synapses and the neural connections. I I, 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 I have a really hard time watching. It's, it's I have really hard time process. watching little kids do it wrong because it, it's building. You yeah. know what I mean? I'd rather they go play soccer. Yeah, and, and... yeah you know, I, and you you know, I love technique. I mean, I, I this is my first love. I've always been a technician, and I learned that from my first coach, uh, my main, my primary mentor, uh, Gilad Bloom. Who I always talk about the Israeli. Um, he's a he's a he was an ATP player and and Davis Cup player for Israel and he's was my coach and also my coaching mentor for many years and he had this he still does he's here in New York he has this in, incredible eye for technique and I learned everything from him I, I always I always say that I, I I give so much credit to him he he taught me how to be a technician and how yeah. to train my eye to see things that most coaches did don't notice and he taught me how to change anything to transform a player with progression and with uh technical drills and and i've never seen a coach operate like that in, in my life you know I, I had you know my certifications but i'd never seen a brilliant technician work like that you know a player could come in and gilad would see something and then Within three months, he could make he, it he any way it. he wanted, you know, with repetition. It's, it's awesome to watch those guys. And it would, he, yeah. It's genius. It's very rare. It's a rare gift. And I just was lucky enough to connect with this guy, and he let me shadow him for years. At, you know, I got injured. He was my coach, and then I got injured. And so when I was injured, I decided right. to try to learn, yeah. you know. <laughs> So I just, I just, st I spent all my time, my free time watching him work, like just trying to see where his eyes went and what, he, when a new player would, would come into the academy, where his eyes would go and yeah. how he would start the progressions. And, and, and that's how I learned. That's it awesome. took years. And it was critical for my coaching success. And then the next big thing was going – being exposed to, to yeah. Spanish, to Spanish teaching, and that changed everything for me in another way because they are not very technical there. They have a very, very different yeah. approach to building. Yeah, I'm sure it's just taking time balls, and staying in there, keeping in the court. <laughs> I'm going to go see though. He's going there this summer. He's, I think you're going down with he plays son this summer. It, it's more nuanced than that. They they have a system. They have, they have, and each coach has. It's not one system. Every every legend there has a slightly different way. But for example, in the Bruguera method, the Bruguera, I've studied a lot with Luis. He's been my greatest mentor in in Spain. Yeah. Luis Bruguera, it's one of the godfathers of Spanish tennis. He he coached his son to two French Opens, and he his yep. son was Sergio yeah. Bruguera, oh, yeah, if absolutely. you if you recall. And Luis has a very unique system for developing racket acceleration and the, the forehand, the Spanish forehand, the, the big one yeah. with, with top spin. And that system I think is brilliant. And we use it all the time here. I, I, I brought it back to the States and much of our system is influenced by Luis yeah. and his philosophy. Not all of it. I tried to take it to the next level and stand on the shoulders yeah. of those giants. But he, he the, you know, it's not just about putting in the balls. It's also about, for, for that system, developing yeah. that huge weapon, yeah. which is the forehand. So there's more there. 
Um, you had an interesting philosophy online. I, I talked about running around the forehand and hitting the forehand, and you, and you were saying, well, if they have a strong backhand, let's hit the strong. I think it was you. I'm hoping it was you. If I'm making this comment, um, is that true? Is is that what you, you you think if you if you you know if the if the girl I think it was a girl who had the stronger backhand and more more common, and I was saying, well, she just learned how to run around with it if she wants to get to the highest levels. And you had a great comment about the opposite. So I, I'd like to get your feedback on that. It was kind of interesting. What are your thoughts? Yeah. You you are right, and I I agree with you, and I agree with all those guys online. I, I tried to make that clear, but I said, guys, there's going to be one or two players out of yeah. maybe ten yeah. or twenty, and it's that's in my opinion, it's not going to be the right yeah. tactic for for that. Yeah. It's rare, so most of the kids. You're absolutely right. I agree. Yeah. You know, I agree. They, they yeah. I teach it all the time. If I have nine out of 10 players, I, I'm going to work. I'm just looking always for the one individual who yeah. is a little different and they have something special yeah. with the back end. And if they have that, so, and it, but to me, I look for the eyes, the way the eyes see the ball on that side and the way they connect. And then when I if I play with them, I, I still play with a lot yeah. of my players. If they if when it's a big moment, like a big point, or if I go to watch them at a tournament, and I notice that on the big moments that shot, yeah, it, it's money. If I see that, I want to do more. I want them to do more of that. I want them to know that in their. And also, you talk to the players. You 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 say, what do you? You don't. You say it in a way that they can tell you the truth, not in the way that that you don't pressure them to tell you. What you want to hear? What what you know? What yeah. they think you want to hear? And they will admit to you that, you know, like this one little girl from Midwest. You know, she comes to me from Kansas City, and she's about top hundred yeah. here in the U.S. And and her team is teaching her. They're 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 reprimanding her every time she wants to hit a back end. And I just brought her to the net and I said, you know, look, what's, what shot do you love? You know, what, what is your favorite? You know, if it's really a big moment, just tell me. Yeah. She said, I love my backhand. I love it. Yeah. I, I love it. And I said, look, look, then I want you to hit that. Yeah. You know, just hit that. And, and unfortunately, she's getting push-ups and she's being made to run laps in, in, her, yeah. in her home club. You know, and, and I, that's what I'm that talking about. Sense. There's just, yeah, for, yeah. for most kids, yeah, it's yeah. going to be the forehand, right? Uh, and I, 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 if you come to watch my training, you will see so yeah. many kids playing like that. And that, that is what they do in Spain. Yeah. And I just think that it's more nuanced than that. And there are some kids, it's the way they're, you really start looking at the eyes and you start looking at what they tr do in the tournament or when you play with them on the big moments, which shot comes yeah, up? Money, yeah. Money. And they light up. They'll show and and, that, and that. then that, that yeah, gives you a sort of a hint. lights up. You know what I mean? And I, I think, my, I guess my point is, you crush a, a player's spirit. If, if, you, if you go against that, they're still yeah. going to play well. But I, I think you crush yeah, their yeah. soul a little bit. You, you don't respect their individuality. Makes sense. And, 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 and they will still be good players, but they're, they're not playing their way. Yeah. They're playing your way. And in the end, the player needs to play according to, to, their, to their insights. Soul, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm getting at. And, and just in this particular example, I, I know it's, it's counter, yeah, it's counter the trend, yeah. you know? And I just wanted to put that out there for, for coaches, you know, try just to keep an open perspective. And I think you have to look for what I mentioned and maybe it comes from experience. It's, it's the eyes, it's the, the, what they do on, on, on the big moments, yes. how they perform with, and you know, you're looking for those little details yeah. and you talk to them, you try to talk to them in a non-leading way. Yeah, no, absolutely. You Let know? them come to that choice. And, and you try to get at what yeah. they, no, that's awesome. yeah, I love it. Chris. Yeah, I have one more um, personal question. Well, not personal question, but just a question. I think I'd love to hear the answer. And it has to do around failure. So uh, failure or apparent failure, um, 
how has that set you personally up for success? We all go through failures. The top players in the world go through failures. How do failures for you? How, how has the failures set you up for future success? Do you mean failures in my own career or do you mean failures as a coach when I'm working with the kid? And what, what it could be anything. Do, I mean, so I'll give you an example. Um, I had a beautiful academy that we had opened up last year, and we, we were hoping to get other programs up and running really quick, and then we couldn't keep the academy open because that didn't happen. That's a failure. But I learned from it to move forward. You know what I mean? So, uh, something, so it could be coaching. It could be personal. But what failure like, – because the secondary question is, is, what's your favorite failure? You know what I mean? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I've had a lot of failures in my life. So – I, I, I would tell you that I think the failure is what you what builds your character and you, you learn about yourself from failure. So, for example, I failed to make mm -hmm. it as a professional and that's that was my dream for for so many years since I was a kid. And, you know, I managed to get I was, a, a you know, I played number one for my yeah. division one college team and I played some futures, but I never really made it, you know, and and. I always believe that I have the work ethic and the discipline to do it. But unfortunately, I did have the, the, the story that you hear many, many injuries and maybe some uh, bad luck in that, in that respect with my body. I always felt like my mind, I had the mental uh, capacity to do it. Like I, I was willing to do all of the, I was willing to suffer as much as it takes. And I was, and I, I like also the lifestyle of a pro professional. I love to travel and I'm, I, I'm very, I'm like a soldier. You know, I come yeah. from a military family and I, I feel I have that in my nature. I'm like a soldier. And I think to be a good tennis professional, you have to have sort of that soldier yeah. uh, mentality, uh, especially yeah. with all the travel. You know, you're on a mission. Every week is yeah, a new absolutely. mission yeah. on the pro tour. So I just feel like my, my body couldn't hold up. So, but I think that, that help, helped me to, to have empathy for my players, to, uh, to be more empathic and to know that, for example, as a coach, I, I know that not all players will make it, even if they are willing to, like you get back to Daniel Coyle and he says, it's how hard you work. Well, I think, and some, you have to have some, some talent in the in the dna in the genetics you know there has to be also a, yeah. it's a combination yeah. deal and so for me i i have the work but my body i don't think i don't know if i had the the the, the physical in i, I just tend to be yeah. a little bit injury prone which is the kiss yeah. of death on the tour that just just as a personal example and i know that that for my for my players i i want them to 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 learn to be like me in terms of their work ethic and to, to yeah. learn fr from that. But I know that, that uh, it doesn't always work out. So, so that gives me a lot of perspective when I'm working with kids, but I would, I would say that, that, that I also, uh, I, I fr from another thing that I learned is, is from learning the game as I got older, I, I always tried yeah. to improve my game as I got older. I never stopped. And for example, as a technical coach, I still worked on my technique even as I got older, after college, and, and throughout, um, even when I was coaching, I, I always tinkered and tried yeah. to get better every year. And I think that gave me a tremendous perspective on teaching technique because I was still experimenting with my own technique as an adult and as a high performance coach. So that gave me an experience that I don't know if any other technical coaches actually they've been through some of the things that they're yeah. doing with their students. Does that so. make sense? So, so because, because I was willing to keep yeah. working on my game, I kept wanting to modernize my game yeah. as an adult, you know, even after college, I, I, I put myself through all of the exercises. I put myself through the progressions to get better, and I, 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 what, I guess what I'm saying is all of the failures in my technique, I flipped it around and, and I, 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 I was able to transform all of those uh, failures and, and to become much better technically yeah. as I got older. But what I didn't realize is that would give me a tremendous empathy and understanding of what my students, when they were young, what, what, they, would, what they would be going through when yeah. they're learning the same Amazing, techniques. Eh? 
In other words, if I had if I had been perfect technically at 10 or even 14, and I wasn't because I started tennis very late. I, I, I played my first okay. tournament 14. If I had been perfect at, when I was young, by the time I became a high performance coach, I would have forgotten all of the steps that it took, all of the feelings, the feelings of insecurity and inadequacy. Yeah, you, you, you relived it. And all of the stages of... You relived it. Yeah, yeah, I lived yeah, as an yeah. adult. Because I kept, I kept working at That's it. That's awesome. So there's an example where my failure to learn great technique when I was younger, maybe because I started late or I just, I was not, I, I didn't have great coaching when I was younger. I, I yeah. taught myself how to play. I never had a, a I never had a, I had a lot of nice guys who tried to help, but they really didn't have the, the technical okay. expertise. And so I never, I never learned that when I was young. So then I, I think that's very unique to my, to the way that I can teach technique now to kids. Cause I've actually gone through a lot of it myself. And I, I'm like, listen, dude, this is hard. <laughs> this is really tough. Yeah. You want to learn a kick, sir? Yeah. Oh, you know how many thousands of balls I, I, I practiced to, to, to learn my kick, sir. Yeah. Oh, the years, so many years. And, and I can really commiserate with my students and I can see it through their eyes. Yeah. I know the feelings. They're very close to home for me. So I, I think that is very unique. I don't know that many junior development coaches have, have done awesome. that. And yeah. it all comes from failure. It comes from failing when I was younger. That's you know? awesome, buddy. Amazing. I love it because you, you can feel the empathy. You, you can feel the empathy, that, right? You, you, you yeah. go through it. I had to go through the same process being – that's a, that's a good story. I haven't told that story to anyone. It's good. It's a great. It's a great. But I believe that. I believe it makes a difference. It. You know what? It, and the, like I said, if I had been perfect at fourteen, I, I would never have. Be, I don't think I would have this understanding of technique that I do now, and I'm able to help all these Chris, kids. Chris, I played you know? recreational tennis as a kid. I was a football player, right? I went to high level football, and so right. I had the, just the same experience, right. just without the, te the the playing background. Okay. But I had to go learn everything step by step by step before I could teach it. You know what I mean? yeah, when you're older, right? When I started teaching, I had to learn it. Right. So my hypothesis, my hypothesis is that makes you a better yeah. technical coach because you've it. lived it yeah. as an adult. And if you ever mentor under yeah. Heath or work with Heath, you, you, got, you not only have to live it, you got to do it at 100%. Like, you know what I mean? There's no 98% there's no, is not good enough. You, you don't get through, right? And I, I, so... You know what I mean? I had to learn yeah. it step by step before you let me teach it anywhere. You know what I mean? It's crazy. How, 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 right. And, and don't, don't you think that learning it at, 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 the, at an older age gave you a unique perspective? Oh, into my the God. Process? Absolutely. And it was, I, 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 yeah. I, I maybe had it a little bit easier than you because I had no baggage. You know what I mean? You had baggage yeah. that you also had to overcome. To mm -hmm. trick your mind. So That's I right. I had no baggage. You know what I mean? That's right. I, th I think especially for if you're if I, I do a lot of technical coaching so that 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 that's one journey that that's based on my fail it's it's definitely yeah. based on yeah. failing that's a lot awesome. I mean it's yeah. not awesome you failed a lot but it's lost awesome what's, what's happened about yeah. but but that's also an example for for yeah. anyone in life you know you you fail and you're you try to flip it you have to find the positives you have you have to try to see you know to see every everything as a challenge that makes you stronger and that's that's one of the things i try to teach to all the kids you know and if we don't live it i mean exactly. what do we, we have to live what we what we exactly. want to teach to them so you know? as you know i'm gonna i'm gonna send this 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 broadcast out everywhere uh, as much as i can um but can you can you at least you know for the people that will see it and are interested in tennis and getting a, a, a great technical opportunity maybe this summer could you give the folks maybe uh, uh, you know a high level elevator pitch on, on the academy and what you're doing in Vermont? First of all, I love Vermont. Beautiful. I had a cottage there as a kid. Well, a shack on Lake Champlain. A kid. Yeah, I'm from Montreal right. originally, so only an hour away. Well, not from where you are, but you know. Yeah, not far at all. Not and far we love at going all. down. We play. We don't play in Vermont. We, I've done a lot of tournaments in Massachusetts, up in the hills there, and on that hard red clay. It's not. It's probably not like your stuff, but uh, the kids learn to hit a kick serve really well there because it goes over the fence. But it's uh, we go to Massachusetts there, but yeah. Nice. So can you give a can you give a, nice. a shout out for yourself and the academy? What's happening this summer? Because I think if you know if if you have room, there's an opportunity for kids to get down there. We're gonna come. Um, you know, please shoot. 
I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm excited to have your team. And this is my new project. It's, it's really cool. It's in the paradise it's of the mountains the there. And yeah. it's really special place in the summer. And so I bought, I bought the club. It's, I, it's, it's mine. And we have, we're on 15 acres and we have red clay and we have indoors if it rains and we have a little gym yeah. and a clubhouse and we do serious Spanish okay. training there. And this is our third year. So we're, we're, this is, well, some people don't know about us yet, but it's, the word is getting out. We have players now coming from all okay. over the country. We have some international players starting to come. We have a few players now in Canada coming. So I'm very excited about this project. And it's not like a yeah, typical yeah. summer camp. It, it is tough. We're like a big family. So off the court, we are, we are very friendly. The Spanish way, yeah. the Spanish vibe, you know, we're, we're like family. But on the court, we're training yeah. really hard. That's awesome. And... And also, the, the one thing about our camp is, is it's the Spanish way. Two players yep. per court, two players per coach. It's not a typical summer camp where we try to jam the courts with big numbers to make. It's not a yeah. money-making machine. It's, it's really high-quality training. And, yeah, people, if people want to learn more about it, they can go you know, to my website, chrislewitt.com. They can, they can follow all my social media stuff. And or they can Twitter, contact me directly. Facebook. Yeah, we're we're on everything. If yeah. you search Chris Lewitt, they can email me directly, Chris at Chris dot com. C H R I S L E W I T dot com. Chris at Chris Lewitt dot com. Do you mind do you mind Chris? And if I go to the, the website Chris I, Lewitt dot com. Absolutely. I just think that as as word we're we're almost sold out already. This for this is our third summer, and I think that in another year or two, we have Wait, we'll be waiting list. We'll have a waiting list. We'll be booking a year out because if we just keep doing yeah. a high quality job, the word gets around. And uh, the other thing that's cool is we have we have UTR. Yeah. We have tournaments almost every weekend there on site, so the players can yeah. get good competition. Like you said, I hire a professional yeah. trainer for the summer. You know, it's very awesome. professionally done. Yeah. And I'm, prou I'm really proud of that because a lot of summer camps are, they're, they're really, they're really uh, the yeah. quality goes down. You know, so, sometimes the academies are really good academies, but in the summer yeah. they let in anybody and, and they water down their training and, and we're just trying to do something different. We're trying very to keep cool. it moving. So I'm not bringing you 13s. I'm going to have like three nines and tens for you coming up for this. That's cool. I like to build them. I like to see, you know, we, we're all about that. No, I, I don't like to inherit players. You, you know, a lot of top, a lot of high performance coaches, they just want those, those players so they can transition to the tour. I don't I, do that I, at I, all, man. I like, Prodigy maker. I like to, I, I, I like, like to build this. the little ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Watching the grow. Yeah. Up. I love that. I, I love that so much. It is very rewarding for me. And I just love those young kids, you know, kids under 10, under 12, especially are, my my favorite. I, I don't know how it happened, but I guess uh, every yeah. coach has their niche. Every coach has. Uh, I work with all ages, but I just think that I, I have a particular passion for the little ones, and I have many experience. I have a strong background over the years, and a very strong yeah. track record with those young ones, building them into champions, and and that's really, uh, you know, I have we have yeah. all the way up to eighteen, but. But you send me those little guys with the with the yeah. racket bag <laughs> bigger than them, you know. The, those yeah. guys, That's I love awesome. those little tigers. Yeah, they're, but they're they're putty, right? <laughs> you can work with them. When you get to eighteen, you're working on little things. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're get to, you get to be your master at the U twelve level, right? You get to you get to be that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, look, I love I have some really great high school kids. You know, uh, we have a mix, but but you know. It, it's the uh, if I can get a kid when they're young and form yeah. them and mold them, it's cool. my favorite thing to do. You know, that's awesome. Any yeah. closing words? Right, first, and, and listen, man, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me for my second show. It's awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. I I, I wish your show the best. Uh, I know we we become yeah. friends online, and I'm looking forward to seeing you this summer. 
and let's try to support each other as best we can. You know, I think this is the future for tennis coaches is getting out and having at the minimum an online presence along with their yeah. offline presence. It's very, it's very important for coaches to learn yeah. this medium and to learn how to not just promote themselves, but to, to present themselves online. And I, I believe that digital coaching is the, is, will be the it's future huge. for sports. Uh, and 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 hybrid co coaching. So, I think you're absolutely doing the the right thing, and it's and it, you're 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 prescient. You're thinking about you're 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 onto a trend that I'm also onto. I'm also I'm a big believer in it. In the last few years, I've made my move digitally as well, and we're we're going to continue to grow with our online school. So anything I could do to help my you know, friends, I think you're you please you know so yeah. we'll share videos and we'll do whatever but we need I, to do to help you out. We're doing the same thing. Oh, so. Yeah, well, that, that's right. We, we can, everyone can support each other. And I just think that coaches who, who yeah. neglect the digital, the digital world are, are eventually over time will, will find themselves at a right. severe disadvantage. It's not that it's not that there's only going to be online coaching or uh, anything like that. Probably not in our lifetime, but, but it's, it's going to be a more and more, you yeah. see it already happening more and more. Brick and mortar coaches are, yeah. are coming online, and it's ha and it's, the, it, it's 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 gonna it's a wave that's yeah. getting bigger. You know, and bigger. it's great, and and eventually the quality will catch up as well. So when guys like you get online and courses we'll put on the qual and other people, the quality will catch up as well. A lot of guys are doing a great job, but it's just not quite there yet. Not not, not everybody. There's great qual quality online coaches, but there's that you're you're gonna see more exactly. and more of the big guns yeah, yeah. coming online. The, the real the real guys the real deal and i like to think that i that that's what i'm doing i like this is normally that you have these you have these guys who are very successful in the trenches and they don't even know yeah, what facebook exactly. is but they don't really understand where the world is going in terms of yeah. digital coaching and digital sports training and it's just a matter of time. You're going to start seeing a trial predicted right here. You're going to start seeing all the all the best coaches in the world. They're, it's not that they might go fully online. It's going to yeah. it's going to be a mix, and 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 people are going to coach in, in new and, and and different ways using technology as technology grows and advances. And so I, I just think that you you know you keep it up, buddy, because you're you're on. Well, thank you're on you. Something and, and you know what? I'm so honored. I hope you come back as we grow the audience out. As I promised you, we're going to boost this one. So the first 10 or 15, we're going to spend a lot on advertising to build the audience because there's great content. You have amazing answers in here. So I just, I'd love to share this out and get us 50,000 views, you know, whatever it is. So yeah. It'll go out. But, but It's a great talk. I, I, I really enjoy I enjoy talking high performance. And, and you asked a lot of really, really good Thank questions so as well. We'll get, them, we'll get even better on those ones too. So I'm going to put all your information in the comment box for everybody to see. Uh, and share that out. We're going to get our date set up to come down and see you. And uh, anything you produce and you want to share with us, please, we'll we'll get it out there. We'll, uh, you know, I'll have kids buying it. We'll do whatever it is to help you, right? So, and uh, we can't wait to to have that. So, I really appreciate it. Okay. All You're right. Thank, Thank you, you amigo. very much. Much appreciated. You too. Say hi have to the family. Good night. And enjoy the rest of your evening. Got to go put <laughs> the kids to bed now. Hey, my dog didn't bark. We're good. <laughs> I know that was amazing. Right, we Thanks, did, man. and thank you everybody right, for showing out. And can't wait to get this out. See you soon. Thanks, buddy.